So in um, today's episode, we're going to be talking about the electron volt, or as it's also known, the EV. So the first question that we need to answer is, what is it? Well, the electron volt is a unit of energy. Now, I've got this world-class drawing over here to try and represent what happens. So, imagine this over here is an electron. As we know, we can see that it's, it's, it's negative. And it goes through a potential difference. In practice, this could just be a couple of parallel plates, and you've uh, attached electrodes to either side, and you've given, a, a, uh, you've given a voltage, a potential difference between them. So let's see the potential difference is one volt. When the electron goes through those plates, it's going to gain energy. The reason why it gains energy is because it will be instantly attracted towards the positive plate, because negative and positive attract. So as the electron leaves, you can see that it will have gained an additional amount of energy. And that gained energy in this case is really what the electron volt is. In fact, the definition of an electron volt is that it's the energy gained or lost by an electron when it goes through a potential difference of one volt. What is the actual value of the electron volt? Well, we can use the good old W is equal to V multiplied by Q equation. Remember, electrical energy or work done is equal to voltage multiplied by the charge. Now in this case, the voltage is just one volt, and our charge, well, that's just the elementary charge, which is just 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. If we multiply those two numbers, one times anything gives you the same number, so that's just 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. This equation will give us the conversion factor. So, if we're going from electron volts to joules, all we need to do is times by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. A good rule of thumb is that if you see the E sign, you have to multiply by it. On the other hand, if you're going from joules back to electron volts, what you need to do is divide by that number. So then we're going to need to divide by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. We can put those two rules into practice. For example, let's convert 1.5 electron volts. So if we convert 1.5 electron volts, well, we can see that we're going from electron volts to joules. So all we need to do really is just multiply that number by the elementary charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19, and that will give us uh, 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Okay, should we do one going the other way as well? So let's pick, I don't know, 5.0 joules. If we're going from joule back to electron volt, what we need to do is divide by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. Okay, well, let's do it. So this is going to be 5 divided by 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19. Now what my calculator gives is 3.125 multiplied by 10 to the 19. However, I know that I need to give my answer to two significant figures because in over here we've only been working up to two significant figures. So I'm going to say that this here is going to equal 3.1 times 10 to the 19 electron volts. Okay, perfect. 
Now, in practice, in the exam, we're going to get a question which most likely looks like something like this. So, we've got the following problem over here. We've got an electron which is accelerated from rest through a potential difference of 5,000 volts. Find its exit speed. Okay, well, our first job in this case will be to find the energy that that electron has acquired. So, remember, if it goes through 1 volt, it acquires 1 AV. If it goes through 5,000 volts, you guessed it, it will acquire 5,000 AV. So, we know that the kinetic energy is going to be 5,000 and what I'm going to do is I'm also going to convert that energy to joules. The reason for that is because if I want my answer for the speed to be in meters per second, I'd better convert that to joules. So 5,000 multiplied by the um, elementary charge, so it's going to be 5,000. multiply by the elementary charge, well, that is going to give us 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 16 joules. Okay, well, if we know the kinetic energy, we can work out the speed really easily. So the kinetic energy is equal to a half mv squared. What I'm going to do next is rearrange for the speed. So I'm going to say that v squared, first of all, that's going to equal twice the kinetic energy divided by the mass. And also I'm going to square root both sides, like so. Okay, perfect. Now all I need to do then is just substitute some numbers into this equation. So, remember my kinetic energy is 8 times 10 to the power of minus 16. It's going to have twice that amount. So, 2 times 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 16. Like so, I'm going to divide by the mass of the electron which is given in the exam, which is 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31. I'm going to carefully input those numbers into my calculator and notice that I'm going to use this fractional function in my calculator um, simply because I really don't want to make a mistake. Okay, so it's the square root of 2 multiplied by 8.0 times 10 to the power of minus 16, and at the bottom I have the mass of the electron, which is 9.11 times 10 to the power of minus 31, which will give me a very large number. So I'm actually going to accelerate my electron to a very high speed. In fact, this number, written up to two significant figures, is 4.2 multiplied by 10 to the 7 meters per second. Perfect. Just to recap, we've done quite a lot of work today. Um, we learned what the electron volt is, the amount of energy acquired or lost by an electron when it travels through a potential difference of 1 volt. This comes from this equation. Energy is V times Q, so the conversion factor for the electron volt is the following. If we're converting from electron volts to joules, we times by that number. If we're going from joules back to electron volts, we divide by the elementary charge. We did a couple of simple conversions over here. And finally, we calculated the speed that an electron gains from rest when it travels through a potential difference. In general, if you're given the potential difference, you can always work out how many joules and how many meters per second an electron will gain.
Perfect. I really hope you enjoyed this episode and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more.